okay we are ready to go okay so first of all thanks a lot for making time and joining me on saturday morning and as you know this session is uh, all about serverless and we are going to do hands-on i'm going to give you a hands-on session and walk through how do we use aws serverless services like api gateway lambda amazon ses with integration with html and css before we start uh, allow me 30 seconds to introduce myself i believe most of you know me if you know me please type yes in the chat box so i'm Praveen misra and i'm aws community builder currently i'm working with the finland uh, cap chimney and my position is AWS Finland Lead Architect. I'm also AWS Map Ambassador. Map means Migration Acceleration Program Ambassador. So here I'm helping my customers to expedite their cloud migration journey. I'm also AWS course creator. I have course on Udemy and I have also YouTube channel where I publish content almost every week. I'm also a Google Cloud Certified Trainer. Now, before we start doing hands-on, I would like to give you a small introduction how architecture from on-premises to evolve to the AWS Cloud and how we can take same architecture to AWS serverless. So, if you understand the agenda, please type yes in the chat box. So I know we are clear what we are going to learn today. Aditya said yes, Ramakrishna said yes, Riya said yes, Teja said yes. Perfect, super, fantastic. So this is simple wave application architecture. This is running on on premises. And I hope most of you know and aware of this kind of architecture. So here you see we have the wave server that's running on the server and here user accessing it with http or https request this is simple architecture now if we need to need to migrate this application on aws how it will looks like and i believe most of you know we can use a ec2 instance where we will deploy our web application and for backend we can use a database now let's assume if there is more traffic and more request on our web application so what we could do there would be the time there will be the performance issues on our web application right and for that we need to vertically scale our ec2 instance right so when we say vertically scale, it means if we were running our EC2 instance or application with 60 GB of memory, let's say 64 GB of memory, then we can double it down, right? So we make it 128 GB of memory and respective, you can also add CPU and storage as well. And if you know a vertical scaling is not ideal solution on the cloud, cloud infrastructure, so ideal solution would be horizontal scaling where we can add more servers so when we add more servers here then it's a little bit difficult to distribute traffic right and for that we use load balancer and if you don't know load balancer is the service that will distribute all incoming traffic to our web servers as you see here, we have the multiple EC2 instances. Now there is one challenge with this architecture, right? Here, if we know we have that many people, let's say million of people accessing this application. So we always need to make sure we are running maximum capacity all the time, right? So if you don't want to pay more and if you want to optimize this architecture, what we can do? We can use AWS Auto Scaling Group, and if you don't know, Auto Scaling Group 
is the AWS service that we can use to scale in scale out our uh, EC2 instances or we can say wave servers with help of CloudWatch. What we can do apart from this we can also make our applications and servers high available and we will distribute our servers in multiple ability zones and trust me this is most common architecture and if you agree with me please type yes in the chat box i also want to know and hear your thoughts your opinion okay sagar said yes ria said yes perfect now we are on the same page okay now there is a common problem same problem with this architecture okay and this problem is as a cloud architect cloud engineer we need to take care of and maintaining operating systems softwares running on the uh, on the ec2 instance we need to take care of health check of your application your server we have to take care of the scaling policies and scaling policies is not easy once we start playing with it okay you have to think and do some permutation combination make sure this particular scaling policy is suitable for your application or for your servers we have to also take care of the capacity planning ability zones scaling disaster recovery and this list is big and big okay it's not a stops here okay and this everything whatever we are doing here we are only doing to run our application code right if you agree please type yes in the chat box and this is application code is where we have our business logics and that's going that's generating all the revenue to our customer or to your business right so just to run this application code we are taking care of all these hassles right and this is what we want to get rid of and all enterprise all customer and also as an engineer we want to get rid of we want to focus on the business we want to focus on the innovation not managing the servers that's where serverless comes and it will rescue us it will help us okay so actually this is the agenda for today i wanted to discuss and and give you hands on demo on the serverless so that was something i wanted to make sure we all have same understanding and we are on the same page so we able to get most out of this session now to understand this serverless how we can take this application and this architecture on aws let's again start with same application which we started so here we try to replicate this architecture on aws okay and here i'm just trying to make you understand okay how you think about the serverless whenever we see serverless someone is talking about the serverless we think is complex is difficult is challenging to learn trust me is one of the simplest framework you can learn and use in your day to day work in day to day job okay and you will get valued you will be get respected inside your organization and with your customer so let's try to understand how you can think about serverless okay so here you see we have the user sending the request to our web server and the web server what is do is to do some some business it has some business logics like right some mathematics some calculations right and after that is either updates the database or something insert or delete right and here if we try to simplify this right so what this user is doing right this user is just sending a request 
is sending request and he's expecting something out from this web servers right and that's where we have the business logic and the database is common right just we store information right now if we simplify this architecture okay so what this user is doing user is just sending the request is just triggering the event okay either to get some information right or update okay and then in the back end here on the business logic what's happening we have the handler that right? that catch the request okay it's do the business logics and it send it back to the database and this is simple things happen inside our application okay and if you see right i have seen people have applications monolith applications okay with ten of thousands of lines of code okay and they have thousands of the request right and everything they are managing in one single application and it's become monolith right then it's become very difficult to manage operate and make it efficient right so we can decompose each and every request in serverless and that's the beauty of the serverless okay we are going to distribute our small small request small small calls and going to make it more reliable more performant so if you think about this architecture how it will go inside aws in terms of the serverless so event will remain same okay and this event for this event we can use AWS API Gateway. I'm going to talk soon about that. Okay. And for handler part, we will use AWS Lambda. Okay. And this is the service used for all used for running your application code. Okay. And for backend, again, we can use DynamoDB, RDS, Amazon, uh, Kinesis, and many more services. Okay. Now, Again, let me take you here. So here we have the application code, right? And this list of things, okay, operating systems, health check, scaling policy, abilities, backup, recovery, everything will be taken care by AWS. And what we are going to do on the serverless, we are going to zip our application code. We are going to zip our application code and going to send it to the Lambda function and lambda function will run your business logic whenever there is the request and that's it it's so simple if it's clear to you and i'm clear so far i'm able to make you understand please type yes in the chat box so i know i'm able to convey i'm able to help you understand this concept Sankar said yes, Surendra said yes, good, good. Vijay said yes, Mahesh said yes, Aditya said yes, fantastic, super. I'm very happy I'm able to make you understand the serverless concept in the simplified way. Now here is the next, okay? And this is this is why we are here, okay? So now we are going to do demo. So what actually we are going to do, let me show you. Okay so this is my website okay if you know uh, i have a youtube channel uh, with name of the cloud advisory where i published content okay and then i one point of time i thought of creating a uh, website for that okay so i've created websites and being a aws engineer okay, architect i don't want to spend money on running servers for these websites so i created this website in HTML and CSS and you know when our website is in HTML CSS we can call it a static website we are calling it a static website because there is no business logic we can write and run okay that's why it's called a static I hope I'm clear here okay so this is completely a static website so I hosted on Amazon S3 okay so this is costing me almost zero cent okay and 
if you are know about the AWS, then you are aware of this. Okay. If not, there is the one playlist on my YouTube channel. You can go and watch. Okay, there I have shown you how to host a static website on AWS S3. So here, one point of time, I thought I should have the contact form. Okay, where people can send me some query if they have something, and they can disc they can set up some meetings. They can say some things what they like, what they don't like, if they want something from my side. Okay. So I create, created this contact form. So when I've created this contact form, so if you try to understand, right? So here, user will come and submit their name, email ID, and they tell me what exactly they need from me. Once they submit, then on if side, there should be the code that will extract all this information okay and this information either it will save on the database or it can send me as a mail so i will know someone has submitted some query right so see if i need to run this business logic on my website right then for that i need any programming language either i need php ruby python node.js or something like this okay so when I need any programming language to write this code, then I need to run this application on a web server because to run this programming language, I need run times, right? That need to be installed on the server. I don't want it to pay for that, okay? And I thought I can use serverless, okay? And if you understand, in the day, I get 10 to 15 queries, okay? So when I get this query is only that time this business logic is running right so it means i not really need to run this application 24 into 7 right that is the beauty of serverless and that we can achieve with the serverless okay so here with the serverless if someone will submit then only serverless function code will trigger and run okay and we only pay for that amount of time okay so i hope i'm clear here so now we are going to look into how i have integrated this what are the different steps i have done okay so for that to make you understand i have created a document okay and this is 24 page of document that i'm going to share with you I have made it very clear, concise, and step by step instruction. Okay, you see, step by step instruction. Okay, how you can create this contact form. You see, I have highlighted when you select which part. Okay, when you create. So, I'm going to share this document with you. Okay, and also, I'm going to show you demo how it's going to work. Okay, let's start. Let's follow this documentation. Okay, so we'll follow this documentation and also I will show you on my aws console okay how i am doing this perfect if you agree please uh write in the comment yes we are ready to follow this sankar said yes dinesh said yes aditya said yes teja said yes super fantastic guys i'm very excited i'm very happy you are able to follow me i'm able to make you understand okay now i will walk you through this document so it will be easy for easy for you to follow up when when i will share this document to you okay so here is the outlines okay how i have organized my document so first things is about the architecture okay so here i have explained something about the architecture i have also explained what is problem with the static website when we need to add server side code okay and that's something pretty much you read when i will share the uh, this document and here is the architecture what i have and what we are going to implement for the contact form okay so let's understand this this is very important okay for the implementation uh, perspective so here you see we have the contact form okay and this contact form is nothing but if you look at my website so this contact form or this is a demo what i have created for you okay so we have this contact form okay and this contact form when someone will input his data his name email id and the message and submit the button then 
it will send a request to the API gateway. So I have created API gateway and here you also see we are creating API gateway. I will take you there. Okay. So it will call API gateway and in API gateway we have configured trigger. Okay. So whenever a request from the contact form will come to the API gateway, API gateway will trigger the lambda function. Okay. And in lambda, lambda function, I have written code that will access Amazon SES service. Amazon SES stands for simple email service. So I'm using SES to send mail to myself. Okay. So when someone submit any information, so I will get mail. So I'll get notified. Okay. So I've configured Amazon SES. So AWS Lambda using Amazon SES service to send mail and Amazon SES using third party mail server means it's using for me I have configured my Gmail okay so using my Gmail ID to send mail to my other mail if it's clear please type yes in the chat box because this is very very important and if you feel I need to re-explain you please write in the message explain again so i will explain it again because this is very very important because that's what we are going to do do in next 20 or 30 minutes perfect mahesh said yes sagar said understood fantastic now one important things i would like to mention here okay uh Surendra said please explain what is third party super so here uh Amazon SES, okay. So Amazon, Amazon SES is the email service that will send email to me, okay, my email ID. So when someone is submitting any query, then we know this flow, okay. From here, Lambda is using SES service, and what SES service will do? It will trigger the email to me, okay. So SES it's only send mail okay but we need a mail server right so either we need a Microsoft Office or Gmail or Joho we need any email server right so that is the third party mail server and for me I'm using a Gmail it will be more clear when I will show you code of Amazon SES okay I hope I'm clear now. One more things. Thank you. Yeah. So then they said yes. Okay. Clear. Understood. So here, let's try to understand this part. Okay. From AWS Lambda, there is plenty of options to interact inside AWS services or third-party services. That's very, very, very important. In this demo, I'm just going to show you how we are interacting with Amazon SES. Here we can use Amazon Kinesis, we can use any database, and mostly in next session, I will try to use any other service. Maybe it's also good to store all this information in our database. So maybe I can organize another session where I will discuss how we store this data in the database for the future reference okay so that's something i wanted to tell you okay one more important things here we need to understand okay and please pay special attention as this is very very important okay and again i have steps here okay create lambda execution roles okay i'm going to explain but let me explain here as we are discussing the architecture and i believe as an engineer and as an architect, understanding architecture is very, very important. So here you see, Lambda function is going to use Amazon SES to send mail, right? So now for time being, let's forget what SES is going to do, right? So let's say if I have to send mail to you, right? So what I will do? I will go open my email i will compose the mail and i will send mail to you right so here 
lambda is going to do same things right because lambda is going to send mail on behalf of me right so lambda need access of the SES service right and for that we need to create lambda execution role so in lambda execution role we are going to give permission to lambda function to access amazon SES service okay if you know what is role what's roles do so it's very good that's what I try to make you understand if it's still it's not clear it's little bit complicated not complicated little bit little bit conceptual topics okay and I have very good session on my youtube channel I will say if if you still doubt go ahead and watch that video and that will help you out okay so here we are going to create a execution role one important things okay and okay and that's all okay now let's start okay so we have understood the architecture now first things first in this architecture we have the contact form right and this contact form is very simple HTML CSS form okay so you see I have written this code here okay it would be little bit difficult for you to understand so let me take you to the my editor okay here what I will do I will remove the CSS part okay 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 so let me take this out because this is something we add later so the currently the part what I am talking I am talking about this HTML code okay and here this code is exact same to the code what I have put it in the documentation so you are going to get this all code with this document okay now let me explain you here here okay is simple simple a form okay a simple a form where we are asking for the name email and some message and we are going to submit it on the click that's all okay now let me take the document again so this is about contact form and after that we are going to set up SES okay and as I said SES is the service that's used by the lambda function and I have explained this is very well here okay so again you are going to get this documentation to set up SES what we need to do we need to create a identity so here let's try to understand that okay what is identity okay so here let's say when I'm going to send mail okay so we need to configure two mail in SES one is the sender and one is the receiver okay so we need to identify okay you are right person and you own this email ID okay so for that we need to create identity and we need to verify this so if you go to Amazon SES you will see this dashboard and from there we need to create create identity I will show you in the console as well okay but let me walk you through with the document so you will have the clear understanding once you cre click on the create identity then it will take you on the this screen where we need to select email ID you can also select domain as well but for my example I have used email ID okay <coughs> then you need to give email ID which you want to identify okay and then create identity and that's all okay and once you create identity after that it will send a mail to you okay and this will be un verified until you will go and check your mail and on mail you will have a link you need to click on that link and once you click on that link that then it will change this status to verified it's mean the email ID what you use to create the identity this is on by you right <laughs> otherwise what will happen people will go use any one email ID right and they will start sending thousands of the mail right so this is not something good practice correct so that's why we need to verify this email ID belongs to you so this is very simple steps we need to do for SES now let me show you in AWS management console <coughs> so here 
let's go on SES service SES and here I have already verified my two email ID and this email ID I will show you in my lambda code okay so what we need to do what I was saying if you are starting first time you need to create click on the create identity you need to select this email ID give your email ID then create identity and that's all go to your email ID click on the link verify it once you do that this status will change to the verified and that's all you need to do for Amazon SES I'm clear so far please write yes in the chat box so I know I am doing well I'm able to make you understand Akshay said yes, Sankar said yes, Vijay said yes, Neha said yes. Fantastic guys, I am very happy. You are able to follow me and I am able to make you understand. Thanks for that. Now, next part as I said, before we create lambda, we need to create lambda execution role. Because this role is something needed when we create lambda function. Perfect? <coughs> And creation of role is very simple. If you are familiar with AWS Identity and Access Management Service. Friends, if not, I will again recommend you, please go and watch on my channel. I have uh, a playlist with AWS Solution Architect Associate. And I have explained very nicely, okay? So please go and watch that and it will be clear. If not, don't worry. I'm going to make you understand here as well, okay? So for that, what you need to do, okay, to create a role, we need policy first, okay. If you don't know, a role is something we'll assume by an identity, okay, and it could be me, you, or could be any AWS service. So here, we are going to create a role for AWS service called Lambda. That's what I explained, correct? So a role need a policy, it need the permission, right? So first of all, to create a role, we need a permission, okay? So here we are going to create a policy, okay? So once you go to IM console, then on the right side, sorry, left side, you see policy. And in scene documentation, I have even put it number, what you do, okay? So go to the IM dashboard, okay, very simple. Then select policy from the right panel, okay? So select policy and create policy here. Once you do that, you will come to this screen, create policy. And here you have two options. So either you can visually create the policy or you can use a JSON. And to make it simple, I have put <coughs> JSON here, okay? So you can just copy this JSON and put it here in JSON box, okay? Again, I'm going to show you in IM console as well. First, let's understand this step by steps so it will be easy for you to follow. Okay, so if you see here, I'm doing nothing, just I'm creating a policy that will give access to send mail. That's all. Okay, so once we give this JSON document here, after that, we need to create the policy. Click on the create policy, it will come to on the this screen there you need to give name of your policy and create policy that's all we have done with the policy once we create policy now we need to create a role again for role we need to select a role from here then create roles then you will come to the this screen where you need to select who will trust the identity and here we know and very clear we are creating this role for AWS Lambda, correct? So here we will select Lambda here, okay? And this is for me. If you want to see Lambda here, you need to click on this drop down and you need to select Lambda from here. Then click next. Then it will take you to the next page where we need to add permission. And as I have created SES send mail policy okay so i will select this policy go to the next on the next screen we need to give the name of the lambda sorry a name of the roles and create and that's all 
so in this we have created policy and the role okay and that we need when we define our lambda function now let me show you same step in aws console so as i said we need to go to iam service select the service and from here we can go first of all we need to create policy then create policy then here we have two options we select json and what you need to put in the json i have already put in the documentation you need to copy and paste it here then go to the next it will ask for the valid uh, json so let me copy it from here to show you okay i will just copy it copy go here and i will select all and paste okay go to the next adding tax we don't need to add any tax not important review and here you need to give policy name okay and that's all create the policy okay i'm not going to create it because already we have next step was to create the role okay select the role from here create role then as i said here on the select trusted entity we need to select lambda if in your case is not available here you can go and select from here okay so i will select this then go to the next then you need to select the policy just you created okay so ses send mail what i have created then go to the next you need to give the role name and that's all create the role it's so simple and very simple if i'm clear so far please let me know yes in the chat box fantastic I, I'm, i'm really happy to say this number of years i'm thank you so much guys for just motivating me here okay so i'm very happy i'm able to make you understand and you able to follow me very nice now next step is to define lambda function and first one is uh, important announcement here i forgot to tell you in the beginning okay please stay till the end i have very special announcement okay and i'm going to give you something okay so please be stay till end till end okay okay so now we need to create and define lambda function okay again to do that we need to go to the aws lambda function dashboard okay and there you need to create a function okay you will see this dashboard this is screen where you need to select create function okay once you do that then you need to select the which programming language you are going to write your lambda function okay and after that click create function and once you do that then this screen will appears this is the code i'm going to walk you through okay and this screen will appears and here you need to paste your this code okay this looks very long okay but it's not so big code so just you need to copy this code okay and you need to paste it here and then you need to deploy it and friends that's all and now let me explain you in aws console and there i will also walk you through with this code what this code is doing okay now we'll go to the dashboard and here type lambda and let's go to the lambda dashboard and here i have already this function is running okay but let me show you the steps what you do once you come here then you need to create this function then you need to give a function name you need to select the programming language for us our code is written in node js so we select node js 16.x then one important point here you need to select the execution role that I have explained in very detail i believe okay and here we have couple of option here as we have already created role so we'll select this option use an existing roles 
and from here you will select the role right the lambda assume role that what I have created then click create function and that's all for creating a function now let me cancel it so once you click there then you will come on this dashboard that what I have shown a screenshot in our documentation and here you need to copy the code from your documentation from here okay and you need to paste it here okay and this is just 42 lines of code it's not exactly 42 there is so many spaces okay it's around 30 lines of code now let me explain you this code okay as we know from lambda we are going to access SES service right so what we are doing here we are including AWS SDK okay and after that we are going to initialize new object for SES service in AP South 1 region okay because you see I am in the Mumbai okay so we need to make sure in which region we want to use SES service okay after that I have defined two variables <coughs> one is the receiver and another is the sender okay so receiver is the email ID who will receive the email when someone will submit the contact form okay and sender is the email ID who which Amazon SES service will use to send the mail Please don't get confused, right? So, SES sending mail to Prabin Misra, right? So, SES using this email ID, Prabin Misra 1505gmail.com to send mail, and I'm going to receive mail on cloud advisory at the rate gmail.com. And this is two email ID we have configured in SES. So, you have, you need to create identity in SES and you need to verify this both email ID okay I hope I'm very clear here after that we have here a uh, response okay we defined and this is what lambda function going to call okay this is the, our handler okay so here we have defined okay receiver we have composed the uh, body message what message will be sent and this is the subject and this is something pretty much you will define and design as per your needs okay so when I will I will receive the mail so it's going to extract full name from the contact form phone email ID and the message okay though there is no phone number in my form okay and then it subject will be something like this wave query form okay and it will append the name of the who is submitting the contact form okay then we are using SES service to send the mail and that's all for the lambda I hope I am clear and we are very clear as of now please once again I'm sorry for asking again and again but something I really interested to know if it's clear Akshay already said yes very nice Sankar said yes Akshay said yes Jyoti said yes fantastic guys super okay so now next and final step is to create API gateway and we understand API gateway will get triggered from our contact form right do Vijay is asking do we need to learn Node.js Vijay not at all at least for this code okay <laughs> just you use copy paste and I have asked you to change to email id and that's all okay and it's something you need to find when it's, it's very simple you can do that so you don't need to learn Node.js but if you are planning to make your carrier in the serverless okay or AWS I will recommend no any programming language you don't need to be the expert based on your interest you can learn Python you learn Node.js and any other language Lambda supports around 8 to 9 8 to 10 languages you can go and look into the Amazon documentation okay <coughs> and if you have such a questions okay end of this session I'm also going to share the uh, cloud advisory 
discord community you can join that you can ask this kind of question okay so maybe when i get time i will be able to help you out okay perfect now let's go to the api gateway okay again like other services we need to again go to the api gateway okay <coughs> and then once you go to the api gateway you will see the four options okay i have only three options here in the screenshot but there's four options okay to create which type of api you want to create okay so here we will select rest api okay in rest api you see two options one is the private okay one is the public so we are going to use rest api okay so this is public one by default so here you will click on build okay after that it will take you to on this screen where you need to select here new api once you select then it will ask for the name of your api so i have given contact us email then you can put some description just to understand what is purpose of this api okay and create api once you do that then it will take you on this screen and this is little bit uh, you need to uh, understand okay so it's little bit only this is api gateway is little bit complicated but i have put very step by steps uh, uh, description here okay it will help you understand okay but yeah let me explain as much as i can here okay so once you come on this screen you need to select this contact us then you need to click on the action then create the resource try to understand this so as of now we have just created a api right then we need to create the resource methods okay two things then we are going to deploy it and then fourth we are going to enable course okay <clears throat> so very simple i have written everything you see this 24 page of document trust me i have explained in very detail so you won't face any problem okay so click on the action then create a resource okay once you click on create a resource it will take you on this screen and here you have to give the resource name okay so for me i have given contact underscore us and this resource path will be populated automatically okay then you need to click on create a resource once you do that then again you will land on this screen and here now we are going to create methods for this resource okay for contact us we are going to create the method right so here if you are from coming from the programming background or you know a little bit web application web development so you know here when we are submitting the form right so this is post request right so we need to create a method for that and that's what we are going to be here do here so here we select the resource then here we select the resource one number then go to the action then we are going to create the methods once you click here you will come to that okay once you do that okay then it will appears like this okay here and just you need to select that okay after that we need to set up this post methods and for that you need to select lambda <coughs> now let's understand this right so when <coughs> api gateway will execute get trigger from the contact form right then api gateway is going to call lambda function right that's what we are going to do here so you are integrating what's the integration type you see here so we are integrating lambda function with the api gateway okay and you select this again you need to select the in which region you have created the lambda function and then in the lambda function you need to search it just type your lambda function name okay so for me i have created contact okay so it appears i have selected then save it once you do that then one pop-up will come it will ask for the permission okay and just said okay and that's all after that you need to deploy it so again you have to do same things like this go to the action and you see the deploy api here right these options so you need to click deploy and this pop-up will comes up okay there you need to select the stage for me I've given a stage as a production okay and deploy it and we 
are almost done and then you will come to this screen and last things what we need to do here we need to enable cross region request blocked okay if you don't do that then your api gateway will not work this is very 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 important okay <coughs> for to do that again you need to go on your api then select the resource go to the action then enable course okay and then it will take you on this screen and here you need to specify from which website you want to access this api gateway okay here you see i put it strict means i'm able to access from anywhere okay so you see here this is okay this is something running on my local okay so i wanted to test from my local machine so i put it strict okay but if i know i'm going to access from my website okay then ideally i will be putting my website name www.thecloudadvisory.com and enable and that's all out of all these steps api gateway was and is little bit little bit little bit hard okay still i try to explain as simple as i can okay and i have put each and every steps so if it's if it's clear so far please type yes in the chat box now we are moving we'll move to the final stage connecting all together shankar said yes aditya said yes mehir said yes fantastic super <coughs> okay so let me show you again api gateway from the aws console api gateway go here already i have this contact form so what you need to do you need to create the api and here you need to select this one okay rest api not this private one after that click build here new you need to the give the name and create api once you do that then you will land to this is screen this is screen okay then you have this contact form okay you need to select here create the resource then create the methods okay then deploy it then enable the course you see course is already enabled for me okay sorry select this one then enable the course okay so everything has been explained there okay now everything is fine last things okay what we need to do we need to put everything all together so let me take you to the architecture once again <coughs> so <coughs> we have configured ses lambda function api gateway we have also created our contact form right but one thing is missing here right we haven't configured our api gateway with contact us form right <clears throat> so now we need to configure api gateway endpoint with contact us form for that what you need to do you need to go to your stage okay which you have deployed click on the stage and the, you will go to the post methods and this is something you need to copy it okay <coughs> this is the url okay and for that we need to write a small java script code okay and this code is here okay and now let me take you on the my editor so it will be more clear to you so let me okay so basically <coughs> this code you need to put it here okay and in this code we need to put the url the url which we got it from api gateway okay we need to put this code here also this code here okay actually we really not need to put this code multiple place i can use this variable here okay but somehow this i put url here okay then what this code is doing okay this is submit to api function okay and this is getting called from here on click then someone will submit the button is calling this function okay and from here we are extracting the input so name inputs email inputs and message inputs okay and then 
we are calling this API okay and we are sending all these details okay and once it will be success okay we'll get this message if it's not success we'll get unsuccessful and that's all so here and that's all now as you seen everything is ready for me okay we are it is the time okay just give me more two to three minutes okay to finish it so as you have seen everything is ready in my uh, aws account okay i have also this form is ready okay i wanted to show you how it's working okay so now this form i need to put the name i need to select email id okay then say something hello demo and submit and i think it didn't work because i need to save it you see i haven't saved that okay so actually it didn't call the javascript perfect now let me refresh again i will select name email id hello demo and submit thanks for contacting us we'll get back to you okay and we will see email soon in my inbox so here is 51 let's wait hopefully it will get change see this is web query submitted right you see the web query submitted name Praveen Misra this undefined phone number I didn't need phone email ID and hello demo okay perfect now we have done the demo now there is question from Bikila. can't we point our dns name from route 53 to api gateway instead you can do that that's also quite possible so you can make it as complicated as reliable you want okay it's very simple example i was trying to show you so you can if you have the static website if your customer has the static website if they want this kind of functionality this is a simple example it could be any things okay we can do n number of things with the serverless just i wanted to make you understand okay how simple it is okay now friends thanks a lot for making time okay and joining this webinar